that the moment you say, right, we don't need that anymore, and you throw it in the bin, the very next day you need it. That's <laughs> oh, it. That's the way say, it works. It, the conversation shouldn't be a battle to see who can beat someone no, down. No, no, no. Yes, it should. It, yes, it should. It should. It's a battle. No, it's lip sync no, battle. No, it that, that's, that's exactly what that's it's meant weird. to be. It's, not, it's meant no, it's to not. be a no, game. Not. No, So we were sitting here trying to go, right, what are we going to do? We're going to try and chat to somebody. It didn't quite happen. And I suddenly came up with, it's a weird kind of day today. And Garvin went, yeah, let's go for that one. That's what we're going to talk about today. It's a weird day every so, day in my life. I don't know about yours, but <laughs> certainly it's weird in this house. It's weird in this head. It's weird at the best of times. I don't even know what normal looks like. Actually, I don't want to know what normal looks like because that's going to be too damn boring for me. But um, when you said weird, there's a, little t there's a little saying that always comes to my mind. It's, it's weird and wonderful. And it's a weird and wonderful day today. It's good to be alive. You don't have to be doing something. You know, actually, the strange thing is you're meant to have days like this. Just stop. Just think. Just pay attention to what's around you. It's a weird day today. It's a nice day today. It's good to be alive. I think I think that's the thing. It's it's it was weird because the things that I was thinking I was going to get to do, I wasn't isn't it wasn't happening that way. So it was you, you had to then re untangle what was going on in your head and start to streamline things a little bit more and start to appreciate what, as you said, what was going on. Because I remember I, I we're doing the artist way. I'm doing morning pages and I was writing along, kind of going. Hang on, I've stopped here. The flow stopped. What should I do? Oh, what's happening outside? What are the birds doing? What's the trees doing? And they were still. And there was no birds flying around. There was a few dark clouds. And I went, hmm, that's weird. No, well, I'd say... It, <laughs> they're, they're not doing anything out there either. <laughs> what we were chatting before, the far side, until you would try to observe them. They were having a grand old day, chin wagged about God knows what. They were having a smoke in the corner, drinking a bit of scotch, shooting the breeze, playing poker. And then you looked in out the window and they all just stopped, had a little tweet, had a little natter, fluttered a wing or two and fecked off. You know, so we don't actually. No, I think what they were doing, what they were doing today, they were looking out the window, kind of hang on, George, George is he's not looking at the moment, so we have a crack. Oh, he's coming back! Quick, hide! <laughs> no, I mean, where are the birdies gone? <laughs> I think we want more weird and wonderful days. That's what we're trying to get into our lives. It's not I'm too busy. I I had this plan. My plan was all these lovely tasks in a row to use up my hours and kill the day. And let's see what we're left with in the day. Now, we were chatting before about the fact that I am on my health health regime with my daughter and she, we're, we're running the, the couple of K this, like in the morning and straight afterwards we're doing a workout. We swapped from the, the Chloe thing girl workout because I was... Start, starting to be in danger of getting those little girly hips getting going on and we swapped over to the man abs version of John Wick and uh, it turns out John Wick wasn't half the intensity of, of the little girl the little girl was putting in the work I'm going I'm swapping back to the girl workout because I'm actually it's actually starting to make a difference to me I think I'm one notch extra on my belt I'm pulling it in the wife was saying you're looking good it's a nice day today it's weird you're looking good. You're not worried about running around doing tasks and objectives and, and, and what's on the plan next. It's just... So your, your mental health is actually improving as well it. because you're actually doing this. You're balancing out your, 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 your physical activities and your mental activities. And when you're doing the physical activities, you're no longer worrying about all the other stuff that you thought was important, which really isn't. And I think that's something that's happening with a lot of people today, these days, is that they're starting to realize what they thought was important actually now isn't as important as it was and it's not taking up so much of their time mentally so they're now having to rethink what what do what do i do and they're not used to this idea that sometimes what you need to do is nothing and nothing is the best thing you can do not not all the time of course no thing in you, you have no thing to do you have nothing to do but it, it's did you plan it or you've just, no, my daughters will be saying, I have nothing to do. And, I, and my son will be saying, I have nothing to do. And I go, I have a list as long as my damn arm out there. I've got to paint this, sure, sweep that, cut the grass over here. They're just things looking out the window to do. God forbid you start adding on the list of, you know, actual things to do. And so it's some, sometimes you need to stop and go, what needs to be done? What do I have 
to do? What do I want to do? What would I love to do? And then you go, what's the weirdest thing I could do that actually would make most sense in this moment in time that I wouldn't have otherwise done? Well, what does the opportunity arise that this now allows me to go and do that I, that I wouldn't have normally done because I didn't think I had time to do, which I think is also interesting. I, I, I'd moved one of the keyboards, as in the, the piano keyboards, upstairs into the, one of the back rooms, but it's now set up so that if I happen to go in there, I can switch it on and just spend a little bit of time. And I was messing around with a few chords. I was trying to work out how to do a song from a 1967 film called uh, uh, Casino Royale. Uh, and James it was, Bond it was by any where, chance? I don't know. Is it? it is a James Bond. It's a James Bond one. It's it was a spoof James Bond that wasn't part of the catalogue of the of the of the canon of of James Bond. But this one was the the nineteen sixty seven uh, version. I was born. And that there you go. Weird coincidence. Yeah. I was born. Weird coincidence. That year. You were born that way. That was what well, was, was weird dusty... and wonderful about nineteen sixty seven. Oh no, it was really good. It was a Dusty Springfield one about looking for love. Which, of course, you were born that year. So well, my parents I weren't looking for love at the time. They obviously found it. No, no, they, they, just, they just had the baby. That's it. They're kind of going, oh, dear me, you know. That's <laughs> when love ended. That, that was when it was all over. <laughs> that, that, that was when the price was too high to pay. Yeah. <laughs> all the responsibilities started to come along. But I found myself actually just playing, playing it in one key and then finding it in another key. And I'm starting to play around with chords just to try and work out. I found that if you, if, all you have to do is play three chords and they're right next to one another that you can play anything you want to, within reason, you know. And well, I'm that's just you, that's not around. me. And that was me. Three chords, that was me don't know being what a weird. chord is, can't get the fingers into those positions, don't even know what you're talking about. Tone deaf. Well, I didn't think so I no could So no amount either. of three chord anything is going to help me play. Well, that's weird. Well, I know, that's, that's, <laughs> that's, that's for sure. And my, my, the rest of the kids have a little bit of, they're not tone deaf. I'm tone deaf and I have no uh, short, I have no long-term memory in terms of remembering songs or lyrics or, or beats or God knows what, or what I what said three seconds ago, we've touched on that many a time. I know. So You just brought back a memory from, from around about 22 years ago where we went to listen to my youngest son in the school choir, and he was the loudest singer, totally tone deaf. Well, he was enjoying <laughs> himself in the he moment. He or son fun. knew yeah. how to. He wasn't aware. Really, yeah. He didn't care Belting what other out. people thought. <laughs> he was Absolutely. enjoying himself. And that's what we want to do. He was. It's not about what other people think. This is your moment in time. This is your... You can be weird if you want to be. You can, you can have... You know, it's, it's, it doesn't matter one person's weird as someone else's norm. Like, oh, no, I don't want to get too weird. I've not, there's an awful lot of weird stuff out there. But, but no, actually, a weird, weird to me was yesterday I found myself with a half an hour to spare. And I said, I nothing to do. So I sat on the, on the sofa and I covered myself in a blanket and I put on one of our podcasts and started listening to it. Now, the wife thought that was ultra weird. I said, here I am. Covered, this is my mindfulness. My mindfulness was listening to myself talk about this, about being mindful. So it was weird. It was wonderful. It was bizarre. But I was enjoying my Sunday afternoon. And I don't know how the hell I got there. There was no amount of uncertainty or probability in the universe that I would have, you know, sort of bet on with Paddy Power to arrive at it. But it was spectacularly weird for me and fully enjoyable so please go off and do something strange wonderful and something that will you know, you've always wanted to do but felt as a little bit weird on the side and i think it brings us back to that idea that we don't do things because we feel that other people will criticize us for doing those things and these are those opportunities where you say do you know what it doesn't matter who's it hurting it's not hurting me. In fact, I'm getting so much more out of it. It's not hurting anybody else. So what, what, what does it matter to them? As long as it keeps you happy, then it's something you want to explore and go in a certain direction that maybe other people wouldn't want to explore. You know, like science fiction, maybe for some people. Or no, the weird, the, the, the word the weird, you, know, you, know, you might be overusing the word weird and go, no, like if you, if, you, if you replace it with another word, it's that's strange. Or that's not... Not that it's not normal. It's it's weird for you to be doing this because you don't normally, or it's normally strange do. for you to be doing something which is outside your what other people might have perceived to be your comfort zone, or you even perceive to be your comfort zone. So it's it's not 
the normal you of the past. It's weird as you're doing this. And and, I, and to, to coin that phrase again, I am now doing an hour of exercise every morning. You know, this might be my 10th or 11th day. I'm 53 years of age. I can guarantee you that never happened before. That is weird to me, but I'm now enjoying it. I'm building a routine around it. This is under the heading of self-motivation and health and even nutrition is brought in. I know the wealth will come later and it doesn't have to be a monetary wealth. The the, the, the strangeness of running around the, the, the garden with my daughter because of the strangeness of the times that we're in has actually given me this time that wouldn't otherwise have happened to build up routines that might have been left too late had other circumstances prevailed and i think that's 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 such an important aspect of it because we we put other things into as being more important than our families at times because we think we have a deadline to reach or or some other activity that needs to be done because it's so important and yet quite often the most important thing is to is to cut that out and spend that time with your family especially as they're growing up, because eventually the job won't be there in the way that you thought it was. It might be either gone into a different job or you're doing some other activity. But your family, we tend to sometimes take for granted because we think they're always going to be there. But you need to develop and nurture that. That needs to become your business as well. And as important as any other part of what you might think is business, because you don't really know how long they're going to be That's- there. They normally grow up and leave the home and they go off to other countries. And then the they're business not there. Of, there, there, there's a weird, there's a weird way you're kind of that phrase. You're going, yeah. it's the business of love, not, not that other industry. The business of life, the business of family. Make it your business to take care of the things that are more important than business, as 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 in the business of supplier, of customer, of of um, you know employee. Yeah, it has its place in life, of course it does. But it's your business to take care of yourself. It's your business to prioritize your family and friends over others not so close. It's not that you're gonna. Yeah, you know, it's it's if there's a choice between A and B, pick A. Pick, pick the not not so weird one. It's what makes more sense is your family, your friends, your life, your time. And and one of the things we mentioned in, in one of our most recent podcasts is the, the fundamental interconnectedness of all things. I'm willing to say yes to the universe going forward based on whatever it proffers. That is a weird thing for me to be saying because I am the, the eternal pessimist, the pessimist optimist, the optimistic pessimist. I will go yay, nay, and, and 50 reasons in between. Be, and and I Actually, I've run out of steam before I even get to consider the real thing. And I would have had it already done had I just got on with it. So from here on in, it's listen to the universe and say yes first. Maybe a no after if I have to because it might be a bit irrational, whatever the ask is. But go with the flow, however weird that might seem, once it doesn't break morals and God knows what. Absolutely. Now, the interesting thing about this is that quite often we're told we have to set our goals, we have to have intentions, we have to know where we're going. And quite often we don't, because even when we do have our intentions, we have our goals that we want to to aim towards, things change sufficiently that those no longer have the same meaning that they once did before. But quite often, one of the things I've been reading, I'm not sure if it's young or whether it's part of the artist way, is they were saying that if you can actually let go of your all your intentions, but become open to all possibilities, then you're not being driven by what you want internally. You're suddenly kind of going, well, actually, let's see what's what's happening around us and what we can connect to. And that that universe is bringing stuff to us, or however however you want to look at it. Actually, I think you are listening to me. You are now remembering me a couple of weeks ago, and I was reading Chopra, and that was a law of giving and receiving, and the law of uncertainty, and the law of basically letting the don't don't put in the certainty because if you pick that yeah. choice you're then stopping all the uncertain ones being maybe more credible opportunities or credible solutions therefore you can always have that one but explore your options let let the universe present other possibilities and don't be definitive over this is the way you do it and this is the only way to do it most of the time it just happens to be how you did it before and you're going to do it again and that's actually the the, the what's what's the, that's the example of madness i think it is or yeah well here's the weird thing 
one of the things I started to notice is quite often I would have a specific time that I me meant to meet somebody. And for some unknown reason, all these other activities would get in the way. And you start to get annoyed with yourself because you can't, you've got to do these before you can get to meet that person. And then you suddenly realize that there's a synchronicity going on. Because all of a sudden you, you realize that that person is also late and they can't meet you at that same point. And when they do get to meet you, it's the right time because you're there. So you can actually let go and, and not get so anxious about having to get to things to fit right. Because the, coffee, quite often, the coffee is always in the coffee shop if the coffee shop is yeah. open. The only, the, only, the only issue there is, is if you don't get in there before it closes. Now, there's 24-hour there's coffee shops out there. It's not important. It's the journey. The journey to go there to meet that person or... I, actually, I, I make a point of merely going to coffee shops, not making arrangements to see anybody in the, in the interest and the hope of seeing who turns up. And someone always does because they're doing something similar. The whole point of the coffee shop or the pub or the club used to be go there and, and there, a lot of people are making that their habit, their go-to place. And they know it's safe to assume they'll see someone they know and that will be who they were meant to meet in the first place. Well, I like the idea that when you go out sometimes, you're kind of going, oh, I wonder who I'll meet today. And there's that sort of anticipation, that excitement of the unknown, because you're now going out there open to all possibilities with no intent. And you'll, you, you then suddenly find that someone that's come to your mind sometime during the last few days suddenly pops up or you suddenly get this idea in your head. Oh, I wonder if such and such will ring me and the phone suddenly rings and it's them. And it's almost and that, as though you're that, suddenly connected to it. That's it. But that's, I think that's what's happening with the book you're talking about, The Artist's Way, and doing do this exercise in the morning pages. And it's not... When, when you were... What was weird to me, you, you were talking about, I had to go off and write this three to five page in the morning for, for 16 weeks or whatever. And I go, what are you writing about? I don't know. What are you planning on writing about? I have no clue whatsoever. You go, oh, that's weird. And it's not, that, no, I'm, and now what's weirder is I'm doing it. I'm sitting down a, for half an hour in the morning. Right now, my pages might be a bit shorter than George's. They won't be as flowery. They'll probably have a lot less in it. And I'd probably be me looking in a mirror, talking to myself and just uh, dictating. But I mean, I am doing it and I'm, I'm saying I'm now instead of talking to the universe I'm writing to the universe and surprisingly so what's weird it's answering back yes because what's happening is that you're going through a process of writing and listening to your own thoughts that's inside your head and the universe can come along and start to direct those thoughts and say what you should be writing down and things will come to mind that you hadn't thought of. And you'll kind of go, oh, that's weird. I, that, that's interesting because that's linking into what I'm, I, I was thinking before or I hadn't thought of that. And maybe that's a really good idea of something I should be now trying to, to look into in a little bit more depth just for the sheer hell of it. Not because I have to get anything out of it, but just because... Wow, it's that's what's come coming to mind and I'm interested in going. That's what's coming back to, it's what's seeping back up. Are these things important? And strangely enough, if, and weirdly enough, if what's coming, seeping back up out of the subconscious, maybe projects you didn't, you, you thought of before and then put on the long finger and they seeped into the archives of the mind, never to be seen again or heard from because too much other fluff is in the way since in terms of basic normal normality of living everyday life and the mundane from washing the dishes to, to driving the car to get petrol and God knows what. And those few pages of writing or what it's really doing is quieting the chatterbox stilling it to let the universal flow in to tap back into my both my subconscious and the universal's conscious of what might be important what might matter more is would this be a good idea to do and a couple of projects just seeped up if you want to call them projects and now i what i put on the long finger before i'm finding i'm going to make time for i believe the universe wants me to do this i don't know why yet i'm not going to question it because i've already said i'm going to say yes we're going to go with the flow and do manifest the, the weird and wonderful now, I think in one of the other episodes, we mentioned uh, the film Signs that had Mel Gibson and how the daughter had actually put in different places water and the dad was kind of going, well, that's weird. And she was kind of going, yeah, but it's bitter. Oh, I'm just going to leave that there. And she left it all over the place. All of a sudden, everything was put in the right place when they needed it 
to to do a piece of action later on in the story, which we won't tell anybody what it was. But it was weird. Man, you just, now, you just tr- you've, tr- you've just weird science is what pops into my mind, and I'm trying to remember. Weird science, yeah. There you go. Oh, you yeah. probably remember the better than I do. I know there was a hot looking bird for teenage kids, and and they built their own one because they couldn't. They couldn't get Brooke a date. Something or other, Brooke wasn't Shields. It, yeah. Is it Brooke Shields or Brooke someone else? I, no, it wasn't no, Brooke, Brooke Shields. Somebody else, Brooke or something. Yeah, it Brooke, was Brooke someone Shields. else, not Shields. That's who it was. Not Shields. And, that's it. Weird, weird. Doesn't matter. <laughs> just <laughs> some hot. Totty, if you're 16 and want to build yourself a date and you have a little bit of technology to hand, you can probably do an awful lot more these days with the tech at hand. I'm not even going to go into that. I'll be afraid to mention it to the to the son as a, yo, know, go off there in your 3D real engine, God knows what, and build yourself a bird. Yo, know, excuse, don't, don't shoot the messenger, anyone female out there. It's, it's funny how all <laughs> conversations end up leading back to the same thing because I had another conversation with a group on Teams earlier on today and ended up, uh, they were talking about swimming pools and speedos and all kinds of things. And one of the ladies in the group went, oh my God, I can't get that out of my eyes. (laughs) It's stuck there. And we're just talking about all this. What, speedos? You're saying speedos. All I can see is all these cyclists going around their lycra underwear and and going into coffee shops and ordering a coffee. And I'm really throwing up my bacon banana sandwich. I don't know what the hell's going on. I don't know where to look. I don't want to look. I think that's, that's, that's actually a fetish. You know, I won't, don't go there, but I'm saying that should we not be allowed there. in terms of cycling That's around the city stuff. center. Absolutely weird. No, it's, it's too weird for me. It's too weird for my lunch. Too weird. You know. too weird. That, that's the point of no return of where you kind of go, we don't want to go with that. That's absolutely there weird. There should be a coffee shop just for those people. You know, uh, <laughs> for the weirdos. <laughs> I don't know. Now, but I come to think going, of it. Going back to the point, yeah, going back to the point was that one of the things I find that's weird is that you end up buying bits and pieces and, and storing them places, and all of a sudden later on, not straight away, months, maybe years, all of a sudden that's the very thing that you need and it's there ready for you. That's the, ma- and it's that's though- the man drawer. The man drawer contains you know, Nokia phones and, oh, yeah. and, and keys that don't go into any door you know of and, and batteries that are of all various sizes and one of each, but you don't know if they're alive or dead. But we, we know every household has these things. Yeah. And, 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 there's, and the there- weird thing is that the moment you say, right, we don't need that anymore and you throw it in the bin, the very next day, Day you need it. That's it. That's <laughs> the way say, it works. What's now, that all about? I'm That's looking weird. at myself on the camera here. There's nothing new. Nothing new. Looking at myself as usual. <laughs> but I'm start. I'm reminded of when I had hair, and when I had hair, and really had a lot of it because I used to have a Mohican. I was weird. I was a six foot six gothic punk with a Mohican that made me seven foot two. And believe me, all the neighbours told I was weird, as did most of the local yokels back in my heyday and my school are non schoolmates as opposed to the ones that got it so i would i like to be different i made it because i was t- so tall I, I i doubled up i doubled down on the fact well if i'm going to be pointed at and slagged i might as well give them a reason and and i i like the fancy clothes i had the hair it was very difficult to get on and off buses without looking like the hunchback in notre dame in terms of the, the seven foot two and the, and all the black and the lipstick and the, and, the, and the eyeliner and the glasses but it made sense at the time and now the last 20 years i was an accountant it didn't make sense after that but now it's starting to make sense again it's coming full circle i've got a big chimpanzee behind me we're rolling the dice it's weird and wonderful and we're on a new journey of self-exploration and finding our vice in the universe and i can't wait to see what a weird shit pops up well, I think I think it's really important because um, we we live in a world where it's constantly trying to get us to conform to what they class as the norms, and yet nobody's normal. Everybody's weird in the in one form or fashion. But we've all been told we have to conform to a system. We have to conform to the way things are supposed to and work that's based on actually who, more who on weird. earth is it that decides yeah. the conform. Yeah, if we that's if more you step weird. back, that's the weird thing. That's the strangest. That's the madness. It's stripping away personality and ego and, uh, well, not an ego in the sense of, you know, being egotistical, but more the the ego of individualis- individualism, or I can't even say the word with the big lips I have. But it's, it's everybody has a place in life and in the universe, but it shouldn't be the same place as everybody else. And it, should be, it shouldn't be little ticky-tacky boxes. And it shouldn't be 
just slot into this moment in time and 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 be a factory output of of of, of potential consumption. It, it it's it's killing time to put in time to generate some nonsense and strip down who you are to to this just just to be consumed by time. It's get back out of there and, we and suddenly, put your clothes you can of, of see weirdness the, back on. You know. Yeah, yeah. Well, you can suddenly see that um, in the in the in the thirties, forties, and fifties, uh, governments were worried about how weird people really were because they were worried that we would become these nasty monsters because of our weirdness. So they wanted to actually suppress all that. And you hear that with the in the conspiracy theories about how we're all being dumbed down and there's fluoride in the in the water to make us docile and all sorts of things like that. But in reality. Everybody is different. Everybody looks at the world in such a different way. And that's actually the beauty of the whole thing is that if you could go to somebody else that, ha that looks at the world from a different perspective. Uh, we all think and we're different, get a clear but we're idea all doing it. the same things. We're all watching Netflix at the same time of night, watching the back-to-back -back episodes. That's because we're conforming to right, the way that so we're being, being told different we have to be. And conforming are two different things. It's like, you know, yes, I know I'm, yes. I'm an individual on the inside, but I'm doing the same things on the outside as you are. We're consuming the same products, watching the same programs, like not necessarily have the same opinions. We might come back to the center from from two polar opposites, and that's what we enjoy with our conversations. We we have a common thread, but it's the difference that makes the difference. Well, you think about it. If if people aren't having conversations in this kind of way, and they're bit, they're just consuming what's being pumped out to them. They may actually get to the point where they think well, there's no point talking to somebody else because they just think about the same things that I think about and they're just going to come off with the same. They're not going to do anything different. But in reality, if we can break away from that and start to do things, I think in the smaller groups, we'll suddenly realise how different we actually are and how weird we are and that that's actually OK. Uh, this is we where I want, think we don't need to discriminate against everybody being weird. Everybody should actually be bringing out their personal philosophies uh not on life but it's play the game the philosophy game it's you don't have to go with the consensus the game it's not that it's a it's a fight or a, a war it's just purely a case of it's a conversation in a pub if we all say the same thing yes and no to it and talk about the sports the other night it's there's nothing different going to happen it's just going to be regurgitation i think i said it in, like last year of shite it's basically the score was did you see it yes i did you did too that's great did you learn something new no all you were doing is affirming you both watched the same program and the guy kicked the ball into the back of the net brilliant did you enjoy it yes i had a great time but now it's your turn to talk about something else your opinion you, the, you know how to make a difference what you're doing different there and, and that's more interesting in my opinion yeah and i agree with that because i think i actually look to have conversations with people that believe something totally different to me have totally different interests purely because they have that different perspective on life and, I, and i'm interested to hear what they have to say and it shouldn't be a battle it, a conversation shouldn't be a battle to see who can beat someone no, down no, no. yes it should it, yes it should. it should it's a battle no, it's lip sync no, battle no, it that, that's, that's exactly what it's just meant weird. to be it's, not, it's meant no, it's to not. be a no, game it's, not. <laughs> it's no, yeah, no i think now that's your opinion not mine i'm going i'd like a little battle but no it's like it's like yeah. risk it's not like it's not war it's a little battle of egos a little battle I, of I, opinions it's a little game Gamifying conversation, but I think I think the great thing is is that by by having the opportunity, like like we're we're having these kind of little banter's backwards and forwards, but we listen to what one each other's doing and saying, and then we come back. Yeah, with that's your opinion. I ignore I ignore absolutely everything you're saying. I can't wait to get back on this or the air. I'm I know. I was gonna <laughs> I was kind of thinking back to when you listened to to their podcast, and I was actually thinking to myself, what happens when I talk? Do you, do you turn? Oh, the I'm only down? listening to you. And because the volume, of, that's the strange, that's the weird thing. Out? I'm only listening to you because it's the first time I've heard what you said. Because when we made it, I, I don't have a clue. <laughs> Which is actually wonderful, because basically what it means is that when you go to listen to each of these, when I've assembled them, it's totally fresh and totally new. And weird, because there's another person actually there talking. I, I didn't. <laughs> or, I, just, I only noticed then that you were there, and I think you said earlier on, or even yesterday, that you're talking more. You get more in. I'm going, you did? Oh, no, I'll have yeah, to, to, to re-weight that. That's not happening anymore. This is, you know, it's a Garvin and him. 
podcast. Yeah, or will be down the line, of course. He just don't he doesn't know it yet. He's dead man walking. Doesn't but know that yet. That's a no, that's dead a story for another walking, day. It, yeah. But no, he has I, to. I'm a figment the, of his imagination. You're I'm the he, weird guy. Sitting you're in the back. my alter ego. That's the whole. You're the battle of wills. That's the whole point. You are meant. So what it actually means is that eventually what we'll have is is we'll have two little Georges on it on on on. Garvin's actual shoulders, one saying one thing and one saying the other one, just to confuse him a little bit. <laughs> and again, as That'd I said, weird. I'll be ignoring both. The weird thing is, if it wasn't for George, this wouldn't be happening. Now, I, in my head, I think I would have got around to it. I might have. I'm more than likely. You know, I, I, it would have been a different timeline. It was that incentive of stepping out into the weird and wonderful world of the unknown, be, making friends and influence of people with someone you didn't know you, you, how you could even have met each other was through social media and through this serendipity within the universe of going, I want to do something. I, want, I don't know what it is. I sort of have some sort of idea. And it's it's gonna be in the in the, to do with filming and uh, the filming is a wide uh, catchment word and what it really was was this it was podcasting vlogcasting having a voice having an opinion having a conversation and letting it out letting the cat out of the box to go shrilling off into the universe screaming like a hyena to let the universe know. It exists. It's no longer in Schroeder's box. It's it's escaped. It's out of the box. That's what this and is it's about. It's not dead. It's not dead. <laughs> no, it's got no nine. No, it it had nine lives. It's got eight left. It's going to use them. <laughs> I think I think what's what's really really good is that we had no idea what we were going to be talking about today. We we've been choosing words to actually do topics, and today's one became weird only because I I briefly said it's been a weird day so far because we were suddenly became open to the universe and allowed things to happen and enjoy the conversation that we've we've now had a chance to so discuss. So enjoy the weird really and wonderful, and recognize Thanks it lot, for everybody. what it is. <laughs> Thanks a lot. <laughs> Thanks for listening to this episode, and we'll look forward to you listening to us next time round. Hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe and click on the bell for notifications.